Imagine every single alcoholic drink that you've ever had leaving a tiny invisible mark on your body. How many marks are there? Is it too late to erase them? Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're diving deep into the science of alcohol damage. By the end, you'll know if your past choices are haunting your present, and most importantly, whether you can still turn things around. And trust me, by the time that we reveal the last piece of evidence, you will see alcohol in a totally whole new light. And here's the crazy thing. Did you know that it can only take two weeks of heavy drinking for a fatty liver to develop? And on the flip side, two to three weeks of sobriety can be enough to reverse it. But if the damage to your liver is more severe, it can take months or years to recover. And in certain cases, it will simply be irreversible. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you one by one through the major organs and systems that are affected by alcohol. We'll be looking at the various degrees and stages of damage, whether recovery is possible, and if yes, how quickly can you expect this to happen? It's time to take your health back into your own hands, and this video today will blow you away. Now, just before we get into it, if you want my personal help stopping drinking in the Sober Clip program, where we help you reframe the way that you view alcohol using something called first principles thinking, please go ahead and click the link in the description. You can book a call, and we can actually see if this program could be a good match. We typically work with business owners, professionals, high achievers, people who have already tried things like AA, doing it on their own, and they want a different way to do things. Go ahead and click the link in the description or just go to soberclear.com for some more information. So first, let's talk about the gastrointestinal tract, otherwise known as the GI tract. So the GI tract refers to all of our organs involved in the digestive process, starting from our mouth all the way to our anus. And it is where alcohol first makes contact with our body. It passes from our mouth through the esophagus into the stomach, where some of it is absorbed into the bloodstream. Most of what is left is then absorbed in the small intestine. And alcohol interferes with the normal functioning of every single organ in the GI tract. For starters, it damages the lining on the inside of our stomach and intestines. Over time, this could lead to a chronic condition known as leaky gut. What this means is that our gut begins to allow things to pass through into the blood that shouldn't, principally bacterial fragments and other toxins. This can lead to chronic inflammation and issues with various other organs that extend far beyond the gut. Alcohol also prevents proper absorption of various nutrients, contributing to the various vitamin and mineral deficiencies that are common among heavy drinkers, like folate, theamine, and vitamin A. Part of this is down to the fact that drinking disrupts the gut microbiota, that is, the countless microorganisms inside of our stomach and intestines that are necessary for gut health and digestion. As a society, we're a bit lost when it comes to this. On the one hand, you have an insatiable demand for various probiotic foods and supplements that aim to support this. And on the other hand, you have most people happily boozing away, nuking their microorganisms with every drink. Now, on a brighter note, after you stop drinking, you can expect your gut to rebound very fast. After three weeks of abstinence, the gut barrier will have made a complete recovery. At that point, the microbiome will have only recovered partially, however. It will take several more weeks or even months to rebound completely, and we don't have enough data at this point to be sure of the exact timeline. The one aspect of gut functioning where you can't expect a quick recovery is in terms of cancer risk. Sadly, because alcohol is a carcinogen, it raises the risk of cancer in more or less every organ of the GI tract. Compared to non-drinkers, heavy drinkers have a five times higher risk of getting cancer in the oral cavity and esophagus. They are also two and a half times more prone to larynx cancer and 1.4 times to colon cancer. So after stopping drinking, these cancer risks will start to decline very slowly. It will generally take several years or even a couple of decades for the risk to fall to the levels of a non-drinker. So the key takeaway here is after a few weeks of abstinence, your gut health will have largely been restored. You can support its recovery through a healthy diet as part of broader lifestyle changes. Next, let's go through the liver. So after it's absorbed into the bloodstream, most of the alcohol that we consume will eventually make its way to the liver. There, it is broken down into various intermediate substances before eventually becoming water and carbon dioxide, which our body can then easily expel. Now, the problem is that one of the intermediate steps in this process involves the conversion of alcohol into an even more toxic molecule called acetaldehyde. Most of the damage that drinking causes is down to the acetaldehyde rather than the ethanol itself. And because acetaldehyde is principally generated in the liver, this is the organ that takes the most damage. So we can divide liver damage into three different stages. Now, we already mentioned the first one, 
fatty liver. This is universal among heavy drinkers and is also common in many moderate drinkers. At this point, the liver is filled with excess fat and swollen, though typically there are no overt symptoms. We saw how this can resolve remarkably fast when you stop drinking, as quickly as three or even two weeks. If left unchecked, however, fatty liver renders the liver more prone to further damage by alcohol and other environmental toxins. This can lead to a more serious condition called hepatitis, characterized by even more fat accumulation, inflammation, and the appearance of scar tissue, so-called fibrosis. Now, you get noticeable symptoms like appetite problems, weakness, nausea, and in severe cases, yellow skin, jaundice. Hepatitis will take far longer than fatty liver to reverse, and if it's in severe form, then you might never make a complete recovery. But if you stop drinking, you can expect to see the first significant improvement in your blood liver markers after merely two weeks. If the hepatitis is not very advanced, then you can make a more or less complete recovery one or two years after your last drink. And it's important to note here that even if you stop drinking completely, there is still the possibility that your liver will progress to the next stage of disease. And the final stage is called called cirrhosis, and sadly, it is irreversible. At this point, the scar tissue has proliferated to such an extent that your liver's regular functioning is severely compromised. There is simply not enough healthy tissue left to meet your body's needs. And sadly, there is no way to restore this scar tissue back into healthy liver cells. Even if the person stops drinking at this point, their life expectancy will be short in the order of several months or years, depending on the severity. And the takeaway here is that unless you have noticeable symptoms, you can expect to make a more or less complete recovery of your liver. Now, next, let's talk about the bones. And here it is. Alcohol eats away at your bones in various ways. Compared to the general population, heavy drinkers show a noticeable reduction in the mass of their bones. This is particularly noticeable with certain bones like those of the spine and hip. Heavy drinkers also suffer from reduced bone mineral density, or BMD. This is the most commonly used metric for bone strength and density. And when BMD levels drop below a certain point, you are dealing with full-blown osteoporosis pathologically weak bones that are prone to fractures. See, even though we view our bones as more static compared to the rest of the body, the reality is, is that they are living tissue in constant biological activity. Part of our bones is continuously being broken down to be replaced by new bone, and drinking interferes with the bone cells responsible for carrying out this process of breakdown and regeneration, leading to a loss in bone mass and strength. And heavy drinking is also linked to vitamin D deficiency, which leads to poor calcium absorbance, calcium being a major component of bones. The end result of all of these changes is a dramatically increased risk of fractures. Heavy drinkers often go around carrying multiple fractures, typically in the ribs, and many times they don't even realize. Up to 50% of male heavy drinkers will have one or more rib fracture, and they will often become aware of this when they have a chest x-ray or encounter another problem. For women, this percentage can be as high as 60%, but the risk of fracture increases beyond the ribs. It extends to more or less all bones, including the hip. And here, a fracture can have life-altering consequences, including extended hospitalization and a host of serious complications, including death. And these risks are all magnified in all the drinkers. Now, the good news is that after your last drink, your bones will begin to make a dramatically fast recovery. After only three weeks, some markers of bone formation will have rebounded to the point of equaling the levels of non-drinkers. But the process will be gradual and other markers of bone health still show subtle deficits even after years of abstinence. For example, one study found that BMD had not improved significantly in one year of abstinence, and improvement was only evident after two years. The two-year mark will also mark a noticeable recovery in previously lost bone mass. And the takeaway here is that if you are relatively young, say under 60, your bone health will soon approach that of non-drinkers. And though your bones might never be quite the same as somebody who has never drank alcohol, your risk of fractures will eventually come very close to that of the general population. Next up, let's look at the heart and cardiovascular system. So the most common effect of heavy drinking on your cardiovascular system is increased blood pressure, so-called hypertension. While it has no visible symptoms of its own, hypertension sets you up to develop all sorts of other serious complications, including heart failure and even stroke. Now, according to some estimates, up to 16% of hypertension cases in the US 
may be alcohol related. Now, fortunately, alcohol related hypertension will typically resolve in under a month from your last drink. Another alcohol related problem is a rapid and irregular heartbeat known as atrial fibrillation or AFib for short. This can come about even in so-called social drinkers after a few days of persistent drinking. It actually used to be called holiday heart since doctors noticed that the change happened after people came back from vacations that involved heavy partying. If you stop drinking shortly after you develop AFib, then it will be like that it will resolve in just a matter of weeks. Now, if you continue drinking, on the other hand, then the AFib may progress into a more chronic form. Now, this is potentially extremely dangerous, increasing your risk of a heart-related death by a whopping fivefold. It can also be far more difficult to resolve. On the extreme, heavy chronic drinking can lead to structural changes in your heart, referred to as alcoholic cardiomyopathy. Think of this as a rubber band that's stretched to the point where it's permanently deformed. This is what alcohol can do to your heart. This is a very serious, life-threatening condition that requires urgent medical care. Symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain, irregular heartbeat, and more. But you do need to be drinking heavily for at least five years to develop this disease. And if you continue drinking after your diagnosis, there is a 50% probability that you'll be dead within four years. If you stop drinking quickly after you are diagnosed, the condition is largely reversible. After some time, however, the change can become so severe that it's irreversible even if you stop. Now, the takeaway here is that unlike other organs, the heart will give you early warning signs of alcohol-related damage. These will usually be in the form of high blood pressure and irregular heartbeat. In the large majority of cases, the damage will be reversed when you stop drinking. Serious cardiomyopathy is the one exception to this rule. Next, we're on to brain and cognitive damage. So one of the organs that alcohol and acetaldehyde punish the most is the brain. Years of heavy drinking lead to a literal shrinkage in the brain's mass. Scientists first realized that alcohol destroys brain cells several decades back when they found that the brains of deceased alcoholics are about an ounce lighter than normal. Using modern brain imaging techniques like MRI or CT scans, this loss of mass is now easily visible to the naked eye. Scientists can see that certain brain structures like the frontal lobe and the cerebellum are particularly prone to this loss of volume, especially in older drinkers. At the same time as these regions are shrinking, the ventricles, which are empty spaces inside of our brain filled with fluid, start to expand in size. So you basically have larger cavities than normal inside of your brain. This generalized brain cell die-off is accompanied by significant cognitive deficits. These cover more or less every aspect of cognitive functioning. So compared to non-drinkers, heavy drinkers have problems with their memory, their verbal capabilities, their learning, their special cognition, their social cognition, executive functioning, and more. Let me put it to you this way. Take more or less any mental faculty that you can think of and administer a specialized psychological test to a group of heavy drinkers and a group of control, and the control being healthy non-drinkers. The drinkers will always perform worse. Alongside all of these changes, alcohol affects a variety of specialized brain circuits that process our emotions. Now, this is because it upsets the production, the distribution and activity of many specialized messenger molecules that our brain cells use to communicate with each other. These molecules are called neurotransmitters. And some of these things are things that we've covered extensively in other videos. They include dopamine, glutamate, GABA, and various others. The activity of some of these neurotransmitters is artificially enhanced, whilst others are suppressed. Basically, your brain on booze becomes this big, tangled mess. This leads to problems with the way that you process pleasure, pain, and all sorts of emotional disturbances related to anxiety and depression. Now, the first few days after your last drink might come as a bit of a shock to your brain. All of the dysregulated neurotransmitter systems that have been relying on a steady influx of alcohol to supplement their activity suddenly discover that the alcohol is all gone. This leads to a period during which your neurotransmitter systems adjust to this new post-alcohol reality, and it's linked to cravings, mood swings, irritability, restlessness, generalized anxiety, inability to experience pleasure, and problems with your sleep. Fortunately, it will only take a few days or weeks at the most for your neurotransmitters to eventually reset and recover back to their pre-alcohol days. It will really differ from one person to the next, but after about one to two weeks, the worst should be behind you. Also, the recovery of brain mass and cognitive function will be far slower, however, and they actually do so astonishingly fast. The first month after your last drink, you will get a dramatic increase in brain mass. After that, you will continue to gain mass, though, at a slower rate. In parallel with the increased brain mass, your cognitive faculties start to begin to improve. This is a very uneven process. 
In certain cognitive domains, performance will equal that of a non-drinker after only six months, while for others, years or even decades may be necessary. And the takeaway here is that after an intense recovery period during the first few weeks, your brain will start to go on a slower recovery trajectory that may last several years. It is important to note that even after it's recovered completely many years after your last drink, your brain will still be very vulnerable to alcohol. Even a relatively small drinking spree of a few weeks will be enough to reverse all your gains in mass and shrink your brain back to its previous size. And guys, if you click the video on the screen now, you can learn why a drinking problem exists with a new system to gain control.